five years old versus brand new filaments. Are they really stronger? Hello, welcome back to my tech farm. Let's compare five years old versus brand new filaments. And I have here three PLA and one PTG filament. The PTG filament was stored in this resealable vacuum bag. Only recently I noticed that the air leaked in and I take it out for this video. The PLA filaments were stored on open air continuously five years. And first I want to compare them as they are now without any drying. And later I will give some serious drying to these old filaments and wrap in the test objects again to see if there will be any significant difference. And I have here the old and the new one from the same manufacturer, so the comparison will be a little bit better. So this PTG and PLA are both five years ago as the Prusament filaments. Now I know that this logo means plastic mladage, but this is what I have and I will compare them with the brand new Prusament filaments. These are in grey color, unfortunately this PTG is in orange, so here we have the different colors. I also noticed that this old PLA is quite brittle. I cannot use it inside those Corex 5 printers with the longer Teflon tube because it will break inside. I'm very curious if drying will help against this. This is Gamebeer PLA Plus, very popular brand here in Hungary. And from this I have a new one in the same color and also PLA Plus. And I noticed that uh, this is also very brittle filament too. The third PLA in this test is this BQ, made in Spain. I also bought it when I bought my first printer. And uh, this brand doesn't exist anymore. And I contacted a company in Spain and they told me that the manufacturing exists only under a different name. And I bought a spool. This is uh, Filtery 3D. Only this will be in white color. And I also noticed that this is also a very brittle filament now. I can see they are still using the smaller spools which are also wider. This means they cannot fit into most of the filament dryers, but even also spool holders. Old Prusament spools are also wider. Now, I think this work may be a good subject for a scientific article too, but I cannot publish the same results on two places. But um, I will separate, I will have different test objects. You know, in this kind of articles, they like units like megapascals, newton per square millimeters and similar. And for this actually I need the solid cross-section area to calculate this. So here in the video I will have a different test objects which are hollow inside, you know, typical for CD printing, 2 volts, 20% infill, and I will have some layer adhesion tests, hooks and similar. Only I hope I will have enough filaments for this testing. I will print everything on Prusa Mark IV, and the reason I chose this machine instead of my fast Corex 5 printers are two reasons actually. One of them is that I have this Ica lake enclosure, but without doors, so this will not be printing inside the enclosure, but on the top I can place any filament dryer I want. The second reason is actually that the path of the filament is quite straight. I already had some quite bad accidents with the Corex 5 printers when this brittle filament broke inside the Teflon tube of AMS unit and then I have to disassemble it and uh, it was quite annoying. These are my test objects. In this video I will use these two for the layer adhesion test. They are hollow inside, 20% infill and two walls. Also I will use this hook, two of these for the tensile test, one for the bending and one for the impact test. For that article I need three test objects for the better statistics and also I have new equipment for the impact testing and for the bending test. My Python supporters will get the Excel table with all results included. This is BQPLA and here I have only two test objects for the impact test because later I decided I need three for that article for better statistics, so two more are printed later. This is Gamebird PLA with uh, four test objects for the impact test. Prusament PLA with slightly changed positions of the objects, this is what you saw in that Prusa slicer. And for the rest of the printing I will use these positions. Prusament PTG on a texture PI sheet. Now I can start the drying, and since this spool is smaller, I can support it only in center. And another crazy thing about this spool, two sides has different diameters. In the meantime, I'm drying the other spools, and since these old spruce and spools are wider, they can fit only in this kind of filament dryers. Unfortunately, I cannot dry two at once, but at least I'm happy that I can dry only this. A really nice function of this uh, Polyfamous is that it can rotate the spool during the drying. So far I cannot see any difference in the print quality, it is good like it was before the drying. The first printing is finished and I cannot really see any difference in between these printings. And just an interesting thing I noticed after the drying, it is not so brittle anymore, I cannot break it by bending. 
and I will check this with other filaments too. Next is the Pro 7 PLA. And of course I'm using the same G-code. Pro 7 PLA after the drying and the same good print quality. Pro 7 dried is finished too. Quick check, whoops. <laughs> Quick check, is it still brittle? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, not so brittle anymore, so maybe there is a hope for this method. This Gambart PLA was in a dryer more than six hours, so let's see how brittle is the filament itself. Interesting, I cannot break it anymore, so sometimes this drying really helps again the brittleness of the filament. Hm. The printing looks nice so far, but it was good before the drying too. And just I want to show something, so the filament already cooled down, so it is not hot after the drying. But even now it is very flexible, not brittle anymore. And actually later I noticed that printing with the wet filament resulted a little bit more stringing and not very visible, but uh, after the drying it was completely clean without any stringing. This PETG had the longest drying and even on higher temperatures compared to the PLA, uh, 55 degrees Celsius is the default and more than 6 hours. Perfectly clean printing without stringing, but the previous one was nice too. Test objects from old filaments are printed, wet this is the dry group, and now I can move to the new filaments and I will print them using the same G-code out of the box without any drying. And look at this beautiful rolling on the Pro7 filaments, and interesting that uh, I cannot see this too often. And this is PETG currently. Just another perfect printing is almost finished. And I don't really understand when people say that printing with PETG is hard. Bruce made new PLA and this one is in lighter grey color so I will not mix it with the PETG. But of course I will store them in separate boxes. Filter is 3D in white color. And the new Gabbard PLA arrives on the carbon spool now but it has the same sticker. And this last group will be printed soon. Everything is printed and labeled and it's time for the mechanical testing. All in all, when I'm preparing this experiment, I realized that I have to do 108 pulling tests. Imagine you will skip forward because this part is boring. I would like to skip too, but I have to do it myself. I'm starting with Gamebird, old wet filament. On left side that you can follow the average values. I never saw this kind of break earlier. This is Gamebird old after the drying. And this is Gamebird new filament. Same with the BQ. Filter is 3D, this is the new BQ. And again, same with the Pusa PLA. And Pusa PTG. These are old new filaments and I couldn't experience any difference between uh, wet and dry filaments. And between the old and new more or less similar except this game bit PLA. Look at this garbage, completely weak layer adhesion. But uh, the new one has a properly changed formula, I'm not sure. But the old filament goes to the trash after the testing. And now the layer adhesion test with these vertically printed test objects with 2 watts and 20% infill. And I already did the testing with the solid test objects for the article. And there the old game build PLA broke under the weight of the arm. Probably we will see something similar even here. And again you can follow the average values on the left side in the same order. Old wet, then old dry. And then new filament. And now this is the BQ. Same for the Prusa PLA. And Prusa and PETG.
I already know the results from that layer adhesion for the Arctica and it looks like that this time for the old filaments we have some difference between wet and dry. So the drying helps a little bit with the layer adhesion and also experience some better layer adhesion with the new filaments compared to the old ones. Especially this old game really, as I mentioned, it goes to the trash. And now the hook, that's where we have the combination of the tensile and bending stress. Here I don't have average values because I have only one test object, so you can see them side by side, all three, and immediately on the left side you can see the compression graph. And I apologize, on the last two recordings I noticed that the hook is out of the frame. Hooks after the test, and at first look, too old Gumbert PLA looks the best, but that's only because of zero layer adhesion and they just slip from the holder. And now three point bending test and in this video I will use my older equipment. Distance between supports is 50 millimeters and I will just place a 5 kilogram load and I will measure the deformation after 10 seconds in millimeters. For that article I will measure the Young's modulus. I have this new equipment which follows better the ISO 178 standard. Distance between supports is 64 millimeters and they are rounded 10 millimeters. And again side by side all three types for one filament brand. And I don't have a space for the graph, I will show it to you in the results part. And here you can see the deformation in millimeters after 10 seconds. And no permanent deformation on them after this test. And now the impact test, and for this video I'm using my DIY impact tester. And for that article I will use the industrial impact tester which I bought from the eBay. There will be a separate video about this, I'm waiting a replacement parts because this holder is not really for these test objects, one element has to be replaced. If you remember that filament itself it was very brittle and I'm curious that if there will be some difference. I think that's only for the filament, uh, I think the test object should have the similar toughness. But let's find out. Camber PLA, old wet. Thanks to the thicker layer adhesion, it acts like, like a spring. Camber PLA new. And now we switch to the other camera to analyze the pictures. These are the edge positions of the hammer after breaking gamber test objects and in all three cases these are very tough materials. Without filaments I'm not surprised because of that weak uh, layer adhesion, it acts like a spring, but the new gamber filament has some new formula too because it is also a very tough material. Big your filter is 3D and they are very close to each other, it was hard to present this on one picture, I even enlarged it a little bit. And these are all very brittle materials, very close to each other. Same with the Pro cement PLA. And this is Prusa and PTG, also very brittle materials. Just quickly to summarize the results. So these are the results of the tensile test. Actually, the brake load was measured here. And this game bird PLA is an exception. Otherwise, there is no big difference. Yes, drying help a little bit, but this is completely negligible. And the difference between old and new filaments is also very small. On the layer adhesion test, again, this game bird PLA is an exception. But maybe here we can see better effect of the drying, so the dried version has a slightly better layer adhesion, but the difference is not so significant. And the uh, new versus old filaments, well, somewhere it was better, somewhere smaller, but again the difference is very minimal. And similar results I got with that uh, layer adhesion for the article with the solid test object. Uh, my Patreon supporters will get that Excel table too. On the hook test, yes, again, the game build PLA will be an exception. And here you can see that it looks like some filaments are more sensitive to moisture. For example, BQ, here we can see a little bit bigger difference between wet and dry, but with other filaments, uh, not really. And if you watch actually the dry old and the new filament, in this case, the difference is extremely minimal. Three point bending test, distance between supports is 50 millimeters. And this is the deformation in millimeters when I place the 5 kg load measured after 10 seconds. And smaller values are better of course. And we can see that game build PLA performed quite good here even with that weak layer adhesion. But of course the best was here the BQ. And we can see in all four cases the drying helped a little bit but the difference is very minimal. And also the difference between new and old filaments is also very small. And here we can see with the PTG a uh, bigger value so this means it is more flexible filament. DIY ISOT impact test with half kilogram hammer. Bigger numbers means tougher material and smaller numbers means more brittle material. And uh, interesting with the game build PLA, I'm not surprised with the old filaments because I saw this earlier that uh, weak layer adhesion act like a spring, 
but even the new filament which has a great layer adhesion it performs quite good here it is extremely tough material other three are very brittle materials especially the bq now the difference between the dry and wet well somewhere it helps somewhere no uh, new filaments again the difference is not big so point of this is actually that uh, no big difference between dry wet or new filaments printing testing video editing each of them was huge work what i learned from this video well, first of all, they are very bad old filaments and uh, I don't really remember that I had problem when it was new. Not sure. Actually, I'm preparing some kind of testing which uh, anybody can do at home to check his own filament because uh, you don't want to print not even figures with this filament, especially not mechanical parts. Let's say if the filament is normal, normal quality. In that case, there is no big difference between old and new filaments. And uh, if the drying helps, well, uh, in this case, with these filaments, not really. Maybe a little bit with layer adhesion, but the difference is not big. And I will continue to store these PLA filaments on open air. Now, actually, where the drying may help is the brittleness of the filament itself. And uh, especially this is useful if you are using some, I don't know, correct swipe printers with a longer Teflon tube. And there, the filament has a lot of bending and it may break inside the Teflon tube. And even now, after one week, I noticed that it is still not so brittle. I can bend these filaments and they will not break. So uh, in this case, that uh, drying really helps. As you can see, they are completely bended. And even this Gambit PLA, it will not snap. Of course, very big difference is where do you live. If you are live in high humidity area near the ocean or something like that, in that case, uh, this may be different. About that scientific article I mentioned, I don't think I have enough data here. It would be good to have more filaments and more filament types, maybe. I have some four years old ABS, maybe I could include it. Uh, if you are from Europe and you have some five years old filament and that filament is available as a new one, maybe you can send me some, I will pay for the shipping. I need only 100 grams or something like that. Uh, it would be good and I could extend this testing. Well, I definitely learned a few things from this video. Uh, I'm not sure about you, but if you like this kind of content, then in that case, you should click that notification bell button too, because um, in most cases, the notification is not sent to my regular subscribers. Yes, says statistics. And I got some comments that they can see I'm frustrated because of this uh, YouTube algorithm. Mm, yes, I am. But until I have my Patreon supporters, theoretically, I could work only for them. Until that, uh, they, they keep the faith for me and I will continue even with these kind of videos. For example, CNC Kitchen, he had a great uh, filament testing videos, but he noticed that a different type of the videos may, makes uh, more views, but uh, I will stay with uh, my track. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you for watching and happy printing.